So lately I've been getting a lot of questions about how I do my audio for my streams, but more importantly, how I take the audio from OBS and then I export that, I guess, route it, however you want to say it, into like Discord or Skype or other uh, VOIP softwares. So I'm going to show you how I take that audio and actually route it out. So we're going to need a couple things before we can even get started. First of all, Obviously, make sure that you have OBS or I think slobs might technically work with this. For my slob folks, you might have to just kind of watch to see what I'm doing here with this. But you're also going to need, I know everybody hates this, you're going to need voice meter or some type of audio routing software that can take audio from one spot and push it to another. I find that voice meter works usually the easiest for what I'm using it for. So banana or potato will work. That sounds really odd out of context. So let's go ahead and get into the OBS side of things first on how you have to set everything up before you're ready to do this. So go into your audio mixer and you can see here that I have my LCT showing here. I'll go to my filters. Inside of the filters, you can see that I have a noise removal, my EQ, my roll offs, which is also an EQ. I just roll off the high and low ends. I have a multi compressor, a compressor, Nova, which is my de -esser, So you don't have as harsh of my s my S noises, the LCT gain. So this is just like after I've done all that stuff, I bring the gain up to match a certain level. And then I have a limiter here. The limiter is essentially going to make sure that like my voice doesn't pass a certain threshold and I don't start clipping inside of OBS. So let's start on even how to route your OBS audio into voice meter. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and we're going to go to the settings in the settings. We're going to go to the audio tab that's on the left down here under advanced, you're going to see the monitoring device. And here I have something called a cable input. That is a virtual cable that I installed with when I did voice meter. And I'll show you how I have my voice meter set up, but this is where it's essentially auto monitoring too. So now I can hear this in my headphones if I turn it on, but I don't normally monitor my device that way. My system has its own built-in monitoring. So I don't recommend that you listen to yourself with this, but you need to set it to some type of like either cable A, cable B, or cable input. Those are usually the main three that you can have with voice meter. And so once you have one of those set, let's pull up voice meter and take a look here. This looks awful. I know here, let's break it down into a couple simple spots for you. Okay. A1 through A5 in this upper right hand corner here. This is just simply your hardware that you're listening to. So these are my headphones. It's my speakers. It's maybe your monitor. If you have built in speakers to your monitor. So when you click on this drop down, all you're going to see is just all the different audio things that you have here. Typically, if you have an ASIO device, you should use this. Otherwise, WDM will work just fine. That usually has the lowest latency for what you're doing. Just select your main listening device up here and you're good. On the left hand side, we have one, two, three, four, five hardware inputs. These are your actual devices that you can use that are like pulling an audio. So you can see right now I have my LCT 440 raw. That's this microphone here. And you can see the raw input right here. When you click up on the top of this, it'll bring a drop down in it. And then this shows you all of your recording devices. Then next to the LCT 440 raw, you can see that I have OBS mic. And then this is where I have cable output. Remember when I talked about cable output, cable A or cable B, this is where that selection is going to be made. So whatever one you've selected inside of your OBS, you're going to choose that corresponding one here as a WDM device. Or if that seems like it's not working, try MME. Once that's selected, we have to do something inside of OBS so that we can start to see this thing moving. Okay. Inside of OBS, go to your audio mixer, find wherever your microphone is at, go to your advanced properties. I guess you could technically use any one of them because advanced properties will bring up all of this. What you're going to want to look for is look for your microphone, go all the way over to where it says monitoring off, turn this to monitor and output, and then click close. Now go back to your voice meter. Now in here, see how you can suddenly see that this one is moving. That is because I'm now, I'm now taking all of my OBS audio that is playing through the LCT 440 source and I'm sending that into voice meter. You're going to see that most likely none of these are picked or maybe several of them are picked. If it's green, it's showing that it's picked. A1 through A5 is just saying, hey, do you want to send the audio here to one of your hardware devices that you have up above? A1 is my headset. So if I click A1, this is really hard because I'm speech jamming myself because I can hear myself in my headphones on like a five millisecond delay. It's very hard to talk this way. I don't recommend monitoring it that way because you will have monitoring lag. So you will not be able to hear the audio that everybody hears, but you know it's playing because you can see the peak meter on the side going up and down. Main thing to note here 
is this B1, B2, and B3. Now, some of you might be using Voice Meter Banana because that one's free. Voice Meter Potato, at some point, you will have to pay for uh, up to a certain amount of however much you're using it. If you're on Voice Meter Potato, you will see exactly what I see. If you're on Voice Meter Banana, you're gonna see three of these hardware inputs and you're gonna see two of these on the right hand side that I haven't talked about yet, you're gonna see these, you're gonna see two of them here versus the three that I have. These are your output devices. Take whatever your OBS is here, and make sure you have that being sent out to B2. And that is for both potato and banana. Now in the desktop comms and tunes, this I've named all of these. If I right click this desktop comms or tunes, it'll let me rename it. So I believe these are called hardware outputs is the normal one that you should see if you have never touched voice meter before. But the main thing that we want to look for is underneath it, it says voice meter VAIO or VIO, VIO. I call it VIO. You can call it whatever. You'll then see under the second one, voice meter aux. And then if you have potato, you'll see VIO 3. Uh, if you don't have potato, you're just gonna have the first two if you have banana. We're gonna set each of these up inside of our sound settings. One of them is gonna be all of the desktop audio. So that's gonna be your games, your YouTube, anything that's playing through your normal desktop. And then the second one is gonna be your comms. And by comms, I mean anything that's going going to or coming from voice over IP or VOIP apps such as like Discord, Skype, stuff like that. Go ahead and open up your sound settings. Inside of your sound settings, go to your sound control panel. This is where all the magic is going to happen in voice meter. Under your playback devices, you're going to see probably cable A, cable input, and you can see right now that cable input is moving because down here, my cable output is showing sound. That means I could listen to it if I wanted to from there. Voice meter aux input. That you're gonna hit select default, and then you're gonna actually click the default communication device. That means that anytime that you're getting a call from something on your computer, that is the main listening device. That's what you're gonna hear here. Then for your voice meter input, you're gonna select this default here. Now, sometimes you might have to reselect the communications one. Sometimes I've seen it like it'll deselect. So that's what you're gonna have to do here. You don't have to do anything with the VOI3 if you have potato. Under recording, you're gonna go down and scroll until you see voice meter aux output. Go ahead and select that and then set that as your default. Once that is done, your audio devices here are essentially set up for what we're about to do next. Now let's take a look at Discord so we can set that up. Go into your settings, go to your voice and video. For your input device, we're gonna use the voice meter aux output. And then for the output device, we're gonna use voice meter aux input. It, I know it's super confusing because they're backwards, but it's it's how the mixer works. I really wish it wasn't like this myself, but just remember that it's it's backwards. It's really odd, I know. But now when I hear when I hit let's check, you can see that I have a voice that's going up and down. Let's see if that's actually coming through. If I go to my voice meter here, I'm gonna scooch this down a little bit. I'm gonna take my headphones off for this so I don't speech jam myself. Let's make sure that this, what we're about to send out here into Discord is going to the right spot. So if you're sending your, your stuff to the correct spot, which again should be B2 on your OBS mic stuff, you should see that right over here inside of voice meter, this bar will move up and down because that's telling you that your voice is going to OBS. So let's hit check here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this device back up. And now look, look here. When I stop talking, that peak meter decays. When I'm talking, you can see that there's sound that's going to and coming back, right? Because we're testing it that we can see that there's stuff going on here. Now, if I deselect B2 here, suddenly my audio does not go to, my audio does not go to Discord or whatever else I'm using anymore, which is why I said you need to make sure that that is set to B2. That is sending all of that stuff into the voice meter aux hardware output device number two. So that's why I kind of harp in that like this is important. To make sure that you can actually hear all this stuff coming through voice meter, whatever you've selected up here on your hardware output, if you only have A1 selected, just click A1 across the top here because that will let you hear your desktop audio from hardware output one. It'll let you hear your voice comms from hardware output two. And let you hear your whatever you've sent to the third one if you have potato. Now on mine, you're gonna see B1 here and B3 here. Don't worry about that. That was something I was testing out for a completely different reason. So don't worry. You just need to make sure that you have like A1 
through however many different hardware outputs you've selected, so A1 through A4 or A2 or whatever like that. So let's take a step back and look at what we've done. Inside of OBS, we're monitoring and outputting our microphone sound into a some type of different device that we use, whether that was just cable, cable A or cable B. Inside of voice meter, we said, hey, I wanna take that particular, in my case, cable output, and I wanna send that to B2, which we have set up as our VOIP handler essentially. From there, we've selected A1 through however many hardware outputs that we have so we can hear our desktop and all this other stuff. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Once this is done inside of your Discord voice meter, whatever, just make sure you have your voice meter aux output as your input device and voice meter aux input as your output device. Once that's done, you are completely done with the setup of all of this stuff. I know this is a complex setup. This is not a fun one. I've spent well over probably six months thinking about this because I wasn't quite sure how I could do it or how I wanted to do it until I woke up one day and was like, hey, couldn't I just monitor and output that to someplace else? And I can. Now, some of you might be like, well, but now I have to have OBS running for others to hear my voice. And you're right, you do have to have OBS running for others to hear your voice, but here's here's a tip for you. If you've installed OBS as a portable install of it, copy paste that install so you have a brand new one, then delete all the shit out of there that you don't need. <laughs> the actual one that I use when I wanna talk to people is a completely blank OBS thing. I have nothing in my scene collections, really. I don't have any profiles. There's no settings selected for this thing other than this is being sent to all of my other stuff. So when I want to talk to people, I open up a completely separate install of OBS. It doesn't even touch the main one I use for recording. It doesn't touch the main one I use for streaming. It doesn't touch any of that. Now, if you don't know how to do a portable install, I did cover it in my first YouTube video. There's also other people who have covered it as well. Uh, I would strongly recommend going to a portable install of OBS for reasons just like this. With all of that out of the way, we can kind of now get into the fun part of all this, which is actually the filters that you can use. So in those filters, we have all the different things we can do for system-wide EQs and compressors and limiters or DSers, however we want to do this. I recommend a couple different plugins for this one because I find them that they're I find that they're very useful. Camel Crusher is an excellent distortion compressor filter. It's a nice, you know, those old timey radio type voices you can do, or you want like a really just blown out voice. Camel Crusher is a really good one to have. Valhalla Super Massive. This is an excellent, excellent reverb and echo device. Like there's so many settings inside of here. It, it it blows my mind. You have Oral River, Oral River, however you want to say that. This is a really good reverb plugin. I, I've used this one a couple times for big cathedrals and it's like a warm, dark reverb. Or I've also done like a small room where you get that like really harsh, like where you get that almost like metal plate reverb and you're in like a really hard, like small room. An Mverb, I apparently really like reverb and echo. <laughs> they all do slightly different things. The main one that I would actually recommend though that you look through is this REAJS. When you open this one up, it's totally blank, but when you click load, there's a ton of different things you can use in here. In pitch, you can pitch everything up and down for your voice. You also have the ability, I'm actually gonna go through some of the ones I've made. You can also make a robotic one where this is like, a, I just use an amplitude modifier for this one, but you can essentially set it so it modulates back and forth to give you like a robotic voice. There's flangers. This one here, I used uh, flange baby. This one here is a chorus where it like multiplies your voice and can change some of the pitches and octaves and stuff like that. I used Aza for chorus. Some of these I don't even know how to pronounce. There's also a really cool glitching effect that's in here that you can use that again, like there's no one setting that works for these, but there's just, there's so much that you can do inside of this. So uh, have fun with them really. Like there's so many different ones that I've used and here's a sound sample of each of the different effects. And remember these can be layered too. So you can do multiple of them. So here's a little sample of all that. Hi, you're in my stream room because this one has all my effects built in. So here are all of your samples now. Here's a deep voice one. This one lets me voice like deep dark characters for when I'm playing like Paper Mario or other fun games like that. Here's the high pitch one, so you can kind of hear a little bit of what this sounds like. Here's the robotic one, so when I want to talk in a robotic voice, here is the one that I can use for that. Here's a flanger, where it kind of just adds a little bit of extra of me. Here's the chorus, so you can hear that there's a bit more of me and I might sound a little wider if you have good separation on the headphones. Here is the glitch effect. It's very odd, but also a lot of fun. Here's your band pass. 
Here's the bad radio. Welcome to like 19, I don't know, 40s or something. I, I look, I'm terrible with time and history. Here's some reverb effects you can see. That's a very like wide, kind of dark, warmer reverb. Here's a more subtle room reverb that you might hear. So it's really sharp and kind of pinpointed for what, you, for what type of reverb that this is. And then here's an echo. It just, it echoes, you know what I'm saying? But here's where the power of this type of thing comes in that you can then basically layer these on top of each other. Let's do a deep voice and an echo. Now suddenly, I'm the big bad of some D&D &D campaign that you're running through whatever you're doing, roll 20 or whatnot. Or instead of a deep voice, what about? A high angelic voice style thing that's got a lot of reverb and floatiness to it. Something like this. Or you can do a glitch effect in a bad radio band pad. Now suddenly, it, it, it sounds like you're in a, a place that can't like uh, properly communicate. Yeah, these are the, all the type of things that you can do with this. And again, I I only have I only have 11 effects here, but I can layer them in all sorts of different ways to create different effects for my stream. I usually do a lot of like voice work when I do the streams because I find it a lot of fun. Uh, and this helps me add a little bit of you know that chef kissiness to it. I don't quite know what to say with it, but it just adds a little bit more to it. So that pretty much covers everything that it is. Now, some of you might ask what I'm using to actually trigger those filters. I use Touch Portal. You can use Leoran board if you want. I don't know if this works on Stream Deck because I don't know if you can trigger audio filters in a Stream Deck. Somebody who owns one, could you please let me know? Because I'm not sure myself because I don't own a Stream Deck. But that pretty much covers everything that we have here. If you have questions, please let me know. I'll try and also link a few voice meter install videos because voice meter is, it's not a well-liked program because of how difficult it looks. Uh, but once that's installed and you have it set up like I have mine set up, you're done. You don't really have to touch it anymore. But I know some people hate, hate <laughs> voice meter. Um, so if you have other audio routing softwares as well, please let me know. And I know, don't do it. I already know what you're gonna do. You're gonna tell me, just go buy a Go XLR. Oh. Some of us don't want to go XLR or don't have the money for it. And here's a way for like $10, 30 at the max, if you buy voice meter potato, that you can do a lot of really cool and awesome effects. If you like this video, please let me know. If you have questions, please let me know down below. I typically try to respond to every question that gets asked. So let me know what you think about this. This is kind of a different one. So, and until next time, I'll see you later. Till then, love ya. Bye.